Bishop uh, Fernandez, we welcome you here for this uh, conferring of the Sacrament of Confirmation upon our students. And after inquiring among the, the lady here, the faithful here that um, have been delegated to being the catechists and the formators of all of our confirmandi, I can attest to you that they are ready for the reception of this sacrament. Thank you, Father Dave. I, I know that priests never lie to the bishop, so I know that you all are well prepared uh, to receive this sacrament. But I'm still a relatively new bishop, and so I still haven't done very many confirmations. I did 158 at St. Bridget in Dublin, Ohio yesterday night, but I'm still getting the hang of things. And so, but I have been to a lot of confirmations. And normally what the bishop does at confirmation is he wanders up and down the aisles and he asks those to be confirmed questions to see if they are well prepared. At which point those to be confirmed start looking at their shoes and slinking down in their pews and praying to God that he, the bishop will call on someone else. But this year I thought I'd do something different and call on the sponsors. At this point the sponsors start slinking down in their pews and looking at their <laughs> shoes and praying to God that the bishop will call on someone else. Actually, I'm going to ask a question. What was last Sunday's gospel? Anyone? It was the evening of the resurrection, St. John's gospel. The doors were locked, the apostles were in fear, and Jesus passed through their midst. And he said, peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced to see the Lord. And he said, peace be with you again. And he said, breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. But Thomas wasn't there, and he didn't believe when they told him. And so Jesus appeared the following Sunday and showed him his hands and wounds to Thomas. Be not unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas made a great proclamation of faith. My Lord and my God, receive the Holy Spirit. Those to be confirmed receive the Holy Spirit. All of us receive the Holy Spirit in baptism. The Holy Spirit was poured into our hearts. We were made a new creation, made members of God's family, the church, and had all our sins washed away. But this evening, those to be confirmed will be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. A permanent seal will be placed on their heart, just as in baptism, and nothing and no one can ever take that away. But just as last Sunday, we heard St. John's version of the resurrection and Jesus' appearance to his disciples, so too, this, today we hear St. Luke's version. Not directly of the resurrection. There is the first appearance of Jesus after the resurrection of St. Mary Magdalene. But then in the 24th chapter of St. Luke, you have the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Everything seemed dark to them. Their hopes in, had been dashed. And just then in that darkness, Jesus drew near and walked with them. And he opened the scriptures to them. And their hearts began burning within them. And then he was going to pretend like he was going to go on further. And they said, stay with us, Lord, for evening draws near. And he took the bread and blessed it, broke it. And their eyes were opened. And they came to know him in the breaking of the bread. And the two disciples ran back and they told everyone that he is risen. He has appeared to Simon. Well, now we have another Lucan appearance of the risen Lord. Jesus appears and he chastises his disciples for being slow to believe. And he eats bread and he eats fish to show that he's truly risen in the flesh. And that is what we are celebrating throughout the Easter season. But he also tells them that the Son of Man was going to have to suffer and die and rise. He showed them again, he opened the scriptures and showed them how everything was going to point to this moment. And then he sent them forth to preach to every creature under heaven, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that they were to be witnesses to these things. Confirmation, in part, is about being a witness. If we think about the scriptures and what Jesus promises to his disciples, he doesn't promise us a rose garden. He doesn't promise us that everything will be easy. In fact, he told his disciples that they would have to take up their cross daily and follow after him, and that the Son of Man would have to suffer and die, 
and we celebrate the Paschal mystery of Christ, which includes his death and resurrection. But at Calvary, something was opened. Jesus' side was opened. His heart was pierced with the lance, and blood and water flowed out. Water, a sign of baptism and new life. Blood, the blood of redemption and sacrifice in the Holy Eucharist. At Calvary, when Jesus died, the veil of the temple was torn open. At, G at, at Calvary, when Jesus died, the tombs were opened, the scriptures say. Yes, with Jesus' death, there was a type of opening. But then with Jesus' resurrection, too, there is a type of opening. Mary Magdalene, for example, came to find the body, but did not find it. Instead, she found that the tomb was open and the stone had been rolled back. At first, she thought Jesus was the gardener. And when he called her Mary, her eyes were open. He said, Rabboni, which means teacher. And she recognized him. He who had been crucified was truly alive. When Jesus appeared to his disciples on the evening of the resurrection, it, he had to show them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced to see the risen Lord. Jesus is constantly opening things. He's opening the grave. He's opening our eyes with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. He opens the scriptures and their hearts are burning within them. All the time, Jesus is calling us to a greater openness. In today's gospel, he chastises his disciples for being hard of heart and slow to believe. But then he opens the scriptures once more and shows them the real meaning and how he's the fulfillment of those scriptures. He opens to them the possibility of eternal life, that death no longer has power over us. He opens our eyes to see possibilities that we could not see before. This is in part what the sacrament of confirmation is about. In being sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit is not so much about young people confirming their faith in Jesus. They will do that by renewing their promises of their baptism. But it's principally about what God does for them. He strengthens them to live more fully the promises of their baptism, to see what baptism is really all about. He conforms them more fully to Jesus Christ so that they can live their baptism more fully. He conforms them to Jesus Christ, who was the witness to the Father's love. And he strengthens them by the gift of his Holy Spirit to defend Christ and his church. Some of the more senior members of our congregation may remember that when the bishop used to come around for confirmation, he used to give each confirmant a slap on the cheek. And the idea was that you were a soldier of Christ, defending Christ, defending his church. We always used to joke that the nuns used to give the list of the boys who had been bad every year to the bishop so he could slap a little harder. But the idea is that we are soldiers, and we have to open our eyes to our visible and invisible enemies, those who would deny Christ, those who would attack the church, those who would uh, attack the poor, the weak, the vulnerable, those who would close doors to people who long to come to our country and who close their hearts to others in their need. The Holy Spirit... The advocate who prays for us even when we do not know how to pray as we ought is called the soul of our souls and he strengthens us to be witnesses. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Simon Peter said, you crucified him and hung him on a tree, but he rose and we are witnesses to these things. The gospel concludes, you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. We are strengthened by the Holy Spirit to witness to something, to someone, to Jesus Christ, whose love is stronger than death. But we must be open to his power. Sometimes we think, if I give myself to Christ, he will take something from me. He will rob me of my freedom. He will impose his rule. But the power of Christ is different. Christ takes nothing from you. And he gives you everything. He gives you his whole life. He gives you his friendship. He gives you his love. Think about what all of us long for. We all want to belong. We all want to love and to be loved. But who on this earth loves you more than Jesus? Who understands you? 
Who is always there for you but him? And in the Holy Eucharist, in the breaking of the bread, he gives you his very life. And if he could give you more, he would. But in fact, he did. When he ascended to the right hand of the Father, he had promised that he would send another, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. And sure enough, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended like tongues of fire. And the apostles who were cowards during Jesus' time of trial were made into bold witnesses. Simon Peter could get up on Pentecost Sunday and preach and thousands would be converted. Simon Peter and St. John could tell the man at the beautiful gate, the, the paralyzed man who was a beggar, I have neither silver nor gold to offer you, but what I offer you, I offer you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, stand, rise up and walk. And he does. When they are brought before the Sanhedrin and put on trial, they see, he says, with all boldness, it is better for us to obey God rather than men. What could bring about such a change, a transformational change, but the Holy Spirit? But now we must open wide not only the doors of our hearts to Christ, but also to the power of his Holy Spirit. Unlike worldly power which wants to control us, the Holy Spirit is gentle. He is the comforter. He can burn like a raging fire and we can be zealous for the gospel and the things of heaven. But he could also be a flickering flame, giving us a gentle warmth, warming our hearts and helping us to be open to others and open to God's plan for our life and our vocation. Yes, the Holy Spirit is the great gift of God from on high. And God wishes to share this gift with you this evening. Not just so you grow holy and are sanctified by the power of the Spirit. He gives you this gift so that you can be his witnesses. Witnesses to what? To a love that is stronger than death. How many lonely people are there in our world who are looking to encounter God and the comforting spirit in and through you? How many people are coming to this country just wanting not to be part of the drug cartels or just wanting to work to provide for their families and will look to you to open your doors and to welcome them? How many people around the world are suffering from violence when the Lord's gift to the church at Easter time is peace and he breathes the spirit of peace on his apostles? What our, what our world needs now more than anything is God. If God is lost, all is lost. But as the Father sends send me, so I also send you, Jesus says. You are witnesses. Jesus sends his apostles out to the ends of the earth. I am one priest. Father Sizemore, Father Gentry are two more. But we need a whole army of witnesses. And our weapons will be truth and justice and goodness and mercy and above all, love. And the Holy Spirit is the bond of love between the Father and the Son. So let us open our hearts and open our minds and open our eyes to the Holy Spirit of God. Veni Sancte Spiritus, veni per Maria.